All right, welcome to the first episode of our brand new podcast from Raven Ministries International Headquarters here in Gretna, Louisiana, just outside the New Orleans metro area. This is Unless the Lord Builds the House. And my name is Pastor Roy Arismendis, and this is my lovely wife, Kim Arismendis. Kim Arismendis. And we are um, happy, happy to, uh, to launch this new podcast. We're encouraged to, uh, to continue to motivate people in their walk with Jesus, you know, to bring um, a vitality to our Christian walk and not to just be Christian by name, but to be really called by Christ to be like him in this world. And so our uh, podcast is based out of a scripture in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 127. And uh, I'm going to read the scripture, and this is really going to be that foundation stone for for this podcast and for all future podcasts. And it says this in Psalms 127, verse 1, he says, Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good. And so um, this is really the um, the foundation scripture of our marriage. And uh, a friend of ours back when we got married uh, had made us a, a painting, a little painting as a wedding gift. And or was it, was it an engagement gift? I think it's a wedding gift. Okay, it was an, a wedding a, gift. A wedding yes. gift. Yeah. And uh, it was with this psalm. And mm-hmm. uh, I remember receiving the gift, and it really just uh, impacted me when I got it. And just the um, the seriousness of that scripture on the verge of getting married, you know, and so that reality just hitting that, you know, Jesus has to be the center of our lives. And if he's not the center, then something else is going to be our driving force. Right. And so as a man, as a husband and as a man of God, challenge daily to keep Jesus at the center of everything we do, because just like the word of God's telling us here, if Jesus is not at the center of our life or what we're doing with our lives, then the work that we're putting into that is really in vain. It's It loses an ultimate purpose because the source of purpose and life is in Jesus. And so um, our podcast will be distinctly from a Christian perspective. And um, this, is, this is who we are. This is how we live. Um, this isn't just a, a hobby for us. I mean, serving Jesus is our life. Uh, we take it. Uh, we we take this thing very seriously, and so this um, this podcast will be geared at at all the issues of life, the issues of life that that arise, um, the things that come at us, the things that are happening in us, the things that are happening to us, the things that we may need to do, um, and and the goal is to really always bring those things back to a godly perspective. Is Jesus really building this area of your life? And so we're gonna just uh, briefly kind of just talk about our, our upbringing, who we are, where we're from, and what we're, um, you know, kind of some vision in our life. And so I'll let my lovely wife here go first. Honey. All right. So, well, um, I grew up in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm the last out of five siblings raised in a Christian family. And I didn't really um, get serious, like, with my walk with a lot until I was like, um, I want to say 1920. Now, I did know who Jesus was, you know, went to church, went to Sunday school, you know, did all the Christian stuff. But I think the Lord really grabbed a hold of my heart um, when I was like 19, 20 years. And that's when, you know, it really hit me. My eyes opened I, and I got to live for the Lord. I got to serve him. And not even that, but just much more his love for me. I moved to the U.S. when I was 19 and lived in Florida, for Lauderdale, Florida, and, you know, got involved with, um, you know, the international street outreach there under um, Pastor uh, Joe Abraham and his wife, Camille Abraham. And, you know, we're, we're able to, you know, grow on other aspect of my, my walk and my faith with the Lord until I merged over and... Um, interned a a year um, with Raven Ministry. And that's when, you know, everything just, the Lord just, you know, he just brought up my my husband into my life. And, you know, we continue to serve the Lord. So, yeah. Amen. And that's the the short story of it. And uh, the the neat part about this podcast is as as it continues to grow, we'll be able to share, um, you know, more layers of our life. And so Mm -hmm. that's really kind of just a snapshot 
of my wife's upbringing. There's definitely a lot more to it. Some really interesting aspects coming from uh, a foreign country, you know, that I think we'll really be able to dive into in future episodes. But uh, myself, uh, my name's Roy Aras Mendez Jr. I'm a junior. Um, I have been ordained under Raven Ministries International through Pastor Troy Bond. And I've been serving here in the New Orleans area under Pastor Troy through Raven Ministries for the better part of 10 years. And so, um, man, time just flew by. It really did. 46 years old now, came into the ministry, I guess, you know, as a as an intern as well when I was about 36. Uh, originally from the, from the Houston area, small little town. Well, it's not so small anymore, but a one-time small little town of Rosenberg, Texas, there on the southwest side of Houston. Um, grew up in church, real similar story to my wife and probably to a lot of you folks out there who might listen to this in the future. Uh, grew up in church, went to private Christian school for a number of years, learned how to do the church thing, you know, like a lot of people, kind of had that routine in our lives, you know, but in my early teens, my my family kind of departed from that way. But even though we stopped going to church, even though we we fell away from from Jesus. Uh, he was never really far from me. You know, through my late teens, early twenties, into my thirties, I really, really struggled with really just my purpose in life, my identity is really what it comes down to. And we see that even today, today's culture. I mean, everything from you know um, the the news to TV to movies to me. I mean, all this stuff is is coming at us, really geared at trying to shape or misshape our identity. And um, so much confusion in the world. And I felt that as a as a young man as well, you know, maybe not over my sexual gender orientation, but just over my purpose in life. Who, who was I? You know, what's my point of being alive? What does my life amount to? I mean, these are things that I would think about. And um, there in the my mid-30s finally just came to that realization that there has to be more. There has to be more than just going to church, than just saying the prayers over and over than just trying to do better. There has to be more. And so lo and behold, you know, through the, I believe the leading of the Holy Spirit, I um, met Pastor Troy. Well, I, I found him first on Facebook. He was one of these crazy um, Christians that liked to tell people about Jesus. And it was just funny. It was like, wow, he, he liked to go into the streets and share his faith. Now, um, of course, here in New Orleans, we have a very famous street called Bourbon Street. And uh, that it tends to be um, his primary choice of, uh, of street evangelism, just because of the fact there's just people there all the time. And uh, so it seemed totally crazy to me. I thought he was a, a pretty much a wacko. <laughs> and uh, But as I began to look at the fruit of his life just through pictures on Facebook, um, to see people stopped in their tracks out there in Bourbon Street, weeping, you know, see a Bible open on Bourbon Street, see young adults praying for people on Bourbon Street, it just began to convict me, it began to really just make me question if I really knew Jesus, you know, and that's a very serious question, you know, that really, I, I don't, everything gets old. You know, Paul talks about examining himself to see if he's still in the faith. Are you in the faith? Mm -hmm. And so I don't say these things to be, um, to incite any type of, uh, you know, argument with somebody, but you know, this is something that we need to do as believers is to constantly examine ourselves to see, are we serving Jesus? You know, is Jesus building the foundation of our house? If the Lord doesn't build this house, then the labor's in vain. I remember seeing Pastor Troy there on Facebook and really having to get real with Jesus that day and say, you know, Lord, I, I believe these people have something that I don't have and um, I want it, whatever it is. Pastor Troy, I guess, reached out to me eventually on Facebook, noticed me kind of trolling the page. And uh, he reached out to me, invited me to come out and evangelize with them on a Friday night. And against my better judgment and of all the fear that was trembling inside of me, uh, I went <laughs> anyway. And, um, you know, and the rest was pretty much history. It, it, was, it was a slow grind back into a, um, a stable walk with Jesus. I, actually, I don't even know if I ever had one before that. So, But it was definitely a grind out of my worldly mindset, my carnal Christianity, into a, a legitimate growing faith in Jesus. And so I believe at 35, when I first met him and I came into the ministry at 36, that, um, that Jesus actually, for the first time in my life, started building the foundation of my house. And uh, I mean, praise the Lord, you know, it doesn't, um, COVID doesn't slow him down. You know, um, the economy doesn't slow him down. He's not, um, 
he's not stopping uh, construction on the spiritual house of our lives because he runs out of material. Right. He has got the finances. He's got the resources and the spirit. And man, he has just been faithful, so faithful over the last, you know, 10 years. And obviously he brought this lovely woman into my life. And now we are here in the New Orleans area as associate pastors, I guess you could say, um, in the ministry. And man, what a privilege it's been. It's been, you know, we um, we are a very active ministry. And uh, I say that very humbly. I mean, the Lord has entrusted us particularly with several um, outreaches and ministries that are very close to our hearts, Mm -hmm. uh, along with many other things that we do through uh, Raven Ministries. And uh, it's really been a, um, a life shift for us. You know, when you moved from Florida to here, right. you were pretty busy over there, but it, everything kind of went to the next level over here, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, man, the Lord has just really been building our house and then adding rooms. Right. He's adding rooms. Yes. <laughs> making it larger. It's what he said he did, enlarge our territory. Yeah. So I know um, prior we were involved when we got married with the bus outreach on a Sunday morning. At the bus stop yeah, here in Gretna. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... And that's what I came into, and I know you've you've started that, and then um, and I mean we've seen um, so many people we were, we were able to have that um, pray with, encourage, build relationship with. We even up to now still see them. Like I've met a lady at Sam's Club, and um, she's looking at me, and I'm looking at her, and she's like, "I know your face," and then it comes down that. It was at the bus bus stop years ago, mm-hmm. and we had the bus stop, and now we do um, Revard the juvenile. Mm-hmm. So where we take a group in there, and that's um, the doors. the The Lord really opened the doors for that. You had to go through such a. Um, um, you had so many things you had to go through before that can happen, and thank God He opened up the door at the right time mm-hmm. um, in December. And then we do, um, you do the jail Mm -hmm. ministry. Preach at the jail, local jail here in Gretna as well. Right, yeah. And then our um, regular church ministries. And so that's just kind of a quick rundown of some of the things we're involved in here in the Mm -hmm. New Orleans metro area. And uh, and then so, but all of these outreaches that my wife had mentioned, whether it's uh, the homeless Taco Tuesday feeding, which Mm -hmm. is on Tuesdays underneath the Claiborne Bridge there in the city, or the senior living facility outreach, or the adopt a block to the Acadian Village, all of those uh, outreaches are really centered around our main assignment here in the New Orleans metro area, which is the Raven Ministries International Training Center. Mm-hmm. And so, I just want to let people know about that who will be listening to the podcast now and in the future. Our primary assignment here really is discipleship of young adults, and so we. Our part of we have planted a couple of churches in this area, and that is definitely a huge segment of our of our assignment as associate pastors here. But I would have to say that our call specifically really has been shaped by the young adults that have come through our training center, our discipleship training center here in Gretna, Louisiana. So um, if you guys have never heard of the School of Urban Missions, it was a, uh, it still is a Bible college that's based out of California. I'm not sure if it's San Diego or San Francisco, um, but it's an Assemblies of God Bible college. And they had a location here in New Orleans for for years Mm -hmm. until Hurricane Katrina hit. And uh, when Katrina hit, they of course evacuated like a lot of people and just never came back. And so the building sat vacant for years until, um, Raven Ministries was actually gifted the building. You know, the Lord provided that building. And so it's a 20,000 square foot multi-story building. It's a campus, essentially a a Bible campus, Bible college campus that uh, for the better part of the last nine to 10 years, you know, has been a, a hub for discipleship and growth of young adults from literally all over the world. So we, uh, we have, um, I guess a program for a lack of a better word, um, that, that really uh, encourages young adults to come and stay for a, a year internship, kind of minimum. Right. They would come and stay for a year and, uh, and get trained up in the ministry. And so all the things that my wife had really laid out there that we're involved in, that we get to do around here, even church planning, which is a huge you know, facet of ministry, um, all of those things are available 
and um, immediately apply to the life of these young adults that, that come in intern with us. But for the most part, the young adults that we get in, you know, have never really experienced this side um, of the street of, of, of ministry. You know, it's usually going to some type of theological seminary, getting a degree, and then, you know, you kind of go on with mm -hmm. maybe, you know, doing ministry or not. But here, um, it's really geared at uh, equipping every single saint for the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, now your call in life and your position, you know, the severity of that may, the responsibility may differ from person to person, but nonetheless, we're raising up disciples to live life the way that Jesus did. Right. You know, so if uh, there's any young adults out there or, or, or grown adults that are listening to today that are, have a young adult in their life um, that they think could benefit from this, uh, give us a shout. You can contact us via the podcast uh, messages uh, on YouTube, or um, you can email me. I'll put a link in the description as well. And let us know. Uh, we would love to send you information on the internship here. If there's somebody who would love to come that maybe doesn't have the finances, once again, just reach out and we do our best to make that happen for young adults. It's a tremendous opportunity for a young adult. Yeah. I mean, great opportunity to, um, to really commit to, um, you know, to the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, an entire year. We, we do a, a year of, um, you know, internship. So you're just really dedicating a year onto the Lord and, um, man, the Lord, he really, he really works upon your heart. It really sets the the tone for what's next in your life, mm -hmm. you know, um, because oftentimes we just rush ahead and, you know, we, we take care of everything else, getting the job, getting the degree, you know, making plans, you know, but the, the, um, the scripture reminds us that man makes plans, but it's the Lord. He orders mm -hmm. our steps. Yep. And um, I mean, let's, if you flip it around instead of, you know, diving in, into the world and trying to get, make make all the preparations for for life. Just commit to to um, being discipled, being trained, being equipped, mm -hmm. and see how see after that what your thought pattern is about um, trying to get into the world and get that job and degree and making all the other plans. And it um, it's it's just a precious time, and you would never. It's something that's very unique that you'd never um, experience anywhere unless if you really commit to that. You would never, you, you know, looking at it, you might think like, oh, I don't really need this because it's simple. I can stay at my church and I can, you know, get involved and do a ministry or f feed the homeless or go, go at the side corner. But there's something different when, when, you're, when you've committed and submitted to um to the process mm -hmm. it changes everything amen and uh yeah that's that is the benefit of what we have here in new orleans and so like my wife said i mean there's a lot of churches doing a lot of good work out there but this i would say you know the training center here is really more of that what i would say is like a spiritual boot camp and so much like um, a military would be designed to and have a boot camp season to really break people of kind of some, you know, laziness, get them used to working out and doing those. I had many friends that went to the military after high school and a couple of them did not survive boot camp. Boot camp is where, where they really weeded out the guys who just didn't have the, um, the fortitude to make it through that. I had one friend who was a really small guy that actually um, went to the Marines, you know, and, and he made it through. He had, you know, but eventually he, cause he was just so small, it just didn't work out for him, mm -hmm. but uh, he had the toughness either way. And so that's, that's kind of what we have going on here. And so I, if I was a young adult, um, I would really take advantage of something like this because like I said, it's, it's, it's like having, um, I don't know if anybody's ever been in a batting cage. You, you know, you're familiar with the batting cage, honey. It's like where you have a baseball bat and you're standing in front of a machine. Yeah, I, that, I've, I've never been in a, a batting cage. So, but yeah, you're, I so, did. You're, so you're, you're standing there and there's a machine that just that pitches balls at you, but at a very, and you can set the speed. And so you could just practice your swing, practice your swing, practice your swing. And, uh, and I look at the training center essentially as like a batting cage because everything is set up for the people who come, the young adults that come. 
even some, you know, older adults that have come, you know, we've had some people in, you know, late twenties, early thirties, you came in in your thirties for an internship. So it's not totally exclusive to the young adults, but for the most part, um, but it really is, is that batting cage you know, where things are set up and designed in a certain way that um, you don't really have to um, start anything. You don't have to get it going yourself. Things are in place and they're just, they're set up at a speed where they can come at you and you can just kind of jump in the flow of all the various aspects of ministry that we, that we have going on here. Um, like I said, everything from from street preaching, evangelism, one-on-one evangelism, to yeah. personal discipleship, feeding the homeless, um, ministering at the elderly or the juvenile homes, and then, of course, church planning. Right. So, I mean, it is, it is such a bang for the buck you right. know, to really come mm-hmm. here and do that. So, um, and, you know, and so that's really kind of the shape of, of our podcast is, is, um, is to remember that all of the facets of the Christian life, that Jesus wants to be the builder of those things. So if he's not building, you know, um, the, the ministry that we're doing, then we have to ask ourselves, why are we doing it? You know? And I found myself like that in church for years here in new Orleans, going to church, kind of being involved because I just thought it was the right thing to do. Right. It wasn't really a burning passion or desire that I had to really please God. And so, um, as believers, you know, whether it's your marriage, which we're huge on marriage, we're big marriage people. Cause we know that, you know, the, the enemies come to destroy the house. That's the bottom line. It's come to, to tear marriages apart. It's come to pull fathers away from their, from their children. He's come to, to lead women away and to, um, you know, to just worldliness and, and all, all the, the deconstruction of just um, the Christian household is so prevalent these days. And so if, if Jesus isn't building the marriage, if he's not building, you know, your relationship with your children, if he's not mm-hmm. building your business, you know, we're, we're business owners as well. That's how we support ourselves. And, um, you know, we have to make a choice every day to keep Jesus at the center of that business, regardless of how many finances are coming in. If he's not building our friendships, you know, he's not building Mm -hmm. our, our future, our desire for the future, whether it's to, um, you know, to, to grow into other branches of ministry or to just be content in what we're doing. If he's not the architect and the builder of those things, then man, it just is a Mm -hmm. brutal time. It is just not pleasant, you know what I mean? And that's not the way God intended it. He didn't intend us to be uh, religious converts who just uh, go through the motions. He wanted a house that he had built so he can inhabit that house. Right. And so um, so that's kind of the long and short of and the intro to our our podcast and uh, for future episodes. And so uh, we uh, invite you guys to uh, to check us out on Facebook. You can uh, I'll put my link in the um, in the description as well. Uh, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel okay. for uh, for more content in the future. Or you could send us prayer requests at the email address. I'll put in the link as well. And folks, just keep us in prayer. You know, we keep all you guys, uh, those who who love and know us, um, your prayers matter. And they, they help us really get us through times um, that, are, that are very tough these days as people continue to fight that spiritual battle for souls. And so we love and appreciate all you guys who support us. And until the next time, remember Jesus is alive and prayer still changes things. Amen. God bless. Yes.